Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Peyton's Flowers. Welcome back, welcome back. Come on in, come on in and enjoy. Today we are going to make a really fun wreath. We're going to have some fun today. These are some fun colors. Um, pink, pink is everywhere. Pink is for fall, pink is for Christmas, pink is for Barbie. Lots of people think it stemmed from Barbie. I don't really know that it did or it didn't, but it's not really, it could be a coincidence, I guess, that at all the design shows last year, we have to buy our products a year in advance. And uh, when we were buying a year ago, all of the main suppliers were carrying an abundance of pink, 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 pink. So whether it had something to do with Barbie, maybe they had some insight, I don't know. But Barbie's gonna be here today. We're gonna have some real fun. Here is our show-stopping piece. Look at that, have some glitter. So it's fuchsia with gold and glitter. We're gonna mix that with ivory and gold. And to just put it right over the top, today we are going to use, from my personal stash, some ferris silk animal print ribbon to tie it all together. It's gonna to be fantastic. It's gonna be one of those show-stopping pieces that everybody's gonna want. So come on in and enjoy. All right, so we're just going to start by greeting our wreath just like we always do. And we're gonna start with the variegated ficus again today. So we're gonna cut up three of these. So when they come from the wholesaler, they always have this kink in them. We're just gonna straighten that out like that. And we're gonna cut the two side branches off. And then the long piece from the top, we're going to cut in two pieces. So we're gonna go right in here on the top of this leaf, which gives this top leaf as much stem as possible. So there we go, we have two pieces from that one piece. We're gonna do all of that three times with three sprays of ficus. And that gives us just enough for that first base of greenery for any wreath, pretty much any wreath, at least a one-sided wreath. This is going to be a one-sided wreath. For a all-around wreath, you may want to do a little bit more, I would say, and maybe your pieces need to be smaller for that as well. We will be doing some all-around wreaths this season coming up. I have done a couple already, and I'm starting to fall in love with them a little bit. It's not something that I really liked in the past, but as we evolve in our crafting, Things change and our tastes change all the time. So um, I'm starting to really like that. So we're gonna give it a shot and do a video and see what you guys think. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna start dipping in to my glue. And our large pumpkin is going to go right in the center of our wreath. So that is where we're going to spray our greenery out from. So today will be a little different than our usual orientation because usually everything sprays outward from your central location which is usually your bow today is not going to be our bow today is going to be our large pumpkin and our bow is going to be a side piece so today we're going to spray out from the pumpkin so these pumpkins did not come like this of course, um, we are in rural Newfoundland, Canada. Our options are minimal here. So it's basically what I can order from my wholesalers. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm not at this giant size where I can order cases of pink pumpkins. So I have to come up with creative ways to do it myself. So we bought these orange pumpkins because we could afford to purchase a case of orange pumpkins, especially if we're going to change some of them. So what we did was um, we pulled the tip out of the pumpkin, then we spray painted the pumpkin with your base pink spray paint. Krylon, I believe, is a really good brand, but whatever you have works. And then on the top, I did another pink with the glitter. So the pink glitter is only in the top of the pumpkin. And then I always spray my stems with a gold, a gold spray paint that is fantastic. I don't know if I'm going to give up all my secrets today, but um, the gold spray paint that I use 
is really, really good. And of course, I will give you up, give up my secret. Um, I don't know. I just don't know exactly what it's called right now, but I will get it. Okay, so as you can see, we are almost done with that first base of green. All right, so we're gonna go right into it. And this is our fantastic pumpkin. I glued it in yesterday before I spray painted it. So I put a dowel up through the bottom. I removed the stem. I painted it pink. Then I painted the pink glitter on the top. I don't know if you can really see how pretty that is, but it is really pretty. And then re-glued the stem in. And that pumpkin is just gonna go right in the middle of those greens right there. That's pretty fantastic. So we're gonna cut some of this stem off, but leave some of it on. It doesn't really matter if it's long and sticks all the way down through. You can trim that off after if you have to. It's better to be too long than too short. So we're gonna dip that into our glue pot. Lots of glue on there. And we're going to hope that we find a hole that we can get down through that grapevine. There we go. There it is. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Awesome. All right. So this would typically be my bow stage and I would put my bow on there and then I will continue to grow it from there. Um, so I'm not going to continue on with the rest of the pumpkins we're adding first i'm going to continue building my base first i just wanted to get that central part into the wreath before we went any further i'm going to use this carrot top as i call it you've seen me use this many times uh i don't really know what it's called maybe it's called ming there is a greenery called ming m-i-n-g that could very possibly be it i always call it carrot top we're just going to spread that throughout that first layer of greenery just add that different texture and different dimension in there. And these extra greeneries give your wreaths that designer touch that everybody's looking for. There's lots of cheaper, less expensive things on the market. You can buy a completed wreath at some flower shops that they have just come in from wholesalers or, or at the dollar store sometimes you can get a wreath. And they just look kind of meh. They don't have that extra designer touch. And this is one of the things that give my wreaths and the, my students that uh, have learned to do wreaths like me, that extra designer touch is that second and third layer of greenery. You always start with your base greenery, which is your least expensive greenery, which is the ficus for me. I usually always use ficus in the variegated or the green. And then I move on to a, a, a little bit better quality. And then if I'm using a really higher quality, then I'll use a higher quality on the top. It's always best to mix your price points. You don't have to use everything that's top dollar. And if you use everything from the dollar store, it's still gonna look like it came from the dollar store. It might look like it was well put together by somebody, but your product is still gonna have that dollar store quality. Whereas you can mix in things from the dollar store and because it's just a mix, it gives that extra, it gives it an extra something. So it's not looking like a dollar store product. I'm loving this today. My goodness. All right, I think we're going to move right into our bow. I think my bow is going to be right here. So I'm going to start with this. <laughs> this is a four inch Therasilk velvet ribbon backed in Dupioni silk. It is absolutely stunning and very expensive. So we're only gonna use a little bit. I don't want the wreath to be unaffordable for clients. So we are going to have a tail that's about 12 inches. I'm going to pinch and I'm going to make a loop and I'm going to pinch just like that. That's half of my bow already. And I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. 
just like that. And that's going to be it for that ribbon. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. It's going to be amazing, amazing. We're going to put some shimmer in there. Again, from Bear Silk. And we're just going to do the same thing. Two loops. Normally I throw the ribbons on the floor while I'm working with it, but not the Ferris Silk. It gets treated like my children would. I don't have children, but if I did. And twist. I'm not in the shot. All right, so I just made that one tail and one loop. And now I'm going to make another loop that's about an inch, an inch and a half shorter than our first loop and pinch in the middle with our tail. And I think this might call for four, three, and four. My goodness gracious. Look at that. We're just going to cut that off right there. Beautiful. I'm going to pick that up. You don't want them to get dirty. Yeah, we're going to add some pink, pink glitter. This is RG ribbon. This is the part of the set that I was telling you about that's available here at Peyton's. Which, again, is fantastic quality ribbon. We love it. And it is affordable for everyone. We do realize that the fair silk is not always the most affordable choice. It's not always the most affordable choice for myself. So I try not to use it in the wreaths that are sold here in the store so much. I try to keep it for custom orders and that sort of thing. Where people know that they're going to pay a premium price. But as soon as you see that Ferris Silk ribbon and you touch it, you can tell the quality of it. And you can see why it is a premium product. All right, one ribbon left. Again, the Ferris Silk. And it is the same as our base ribbon. It's just in a one inch diameter. One inch diameter, not the right word. One inch width, not a diameter. Diameter is a circle, isn't it? <coughs> All right, we're just going to put a couple of loops of this in here. One, two, three is my favorite number. Oh my God, this bow. Yeah, look at that. Whoa. All right, we're going to use that double zip tie method that I've ta taught you before. We're going to put one zip tie right across the back of the bow. One ear, Mickey. Minnie's ears look a little uneven, but I think I've got it there now. Okay, back to my zip tie. One zip tie across the bow, and then one zip tie up and around the bow, so that everything is included in that zip tie, even your second zip tie. And when you zip that, then that is tight and secure. And there is our fantastic bow. Even before it's fluffed, even before any of the dovetailing is done, it looks fantastic. All right, so that first zip tie that we just zipped, I'm just going to cut that right off. That has done its job already, so we don't want that end sticking out there. So I've changed my mind. I stood back and thought, oh, I think it's beautiful and pretty, but I think it could even be nicer if it was more so on the bottom. Got away from me. So I think we're going to try that now. So I just clipped it off. This is the great thing about not gluing. I would never glue on a bow. This is the great thing about the zip tie method. All I had to do was clip that zip tie, slip a new one through that tie, and we're ready to go again. So I think that we're going to put that right here. Now, once you get your bow on with that zip tie, 
you can fluff it and pull on it and get it to that shape that you you want especially with these very premium ribbons they will go wherever you want them to go and they will stay there you don't have to worry about them moving Keep elbowing the dogs on the shelf. Now I think it's fantastic. All right, we're just going to continue on. Sorry, this is new for me, the microphone. So I hope you can hear me all okay. And I have to get used to wearing it. All right. Maybe that one's too big. That one's better. Maybe the big one will be just for the centerpiece, part two of this video. All a learning curve. It's a learning. Every wreath is different unless you're doing multiple wreaths, which is a great thing for all of you people out there who are doing this as a side hustle business. Multiple wreaths are great because you can spend the hours on your first wreath so what i'm just trying to do right here is decipher if i want these stems to be pointing in the same direction i kind of want it to be pointing in a different direction so we're going to go in there so i want to stick in this side anyway so what i was saying is you can spend that time on your first wreath to get it exactly how you want it and then if you're doing multiples three or four of that design then the third the second third and fourth one can move along really quickly She's in there and looking beautiful. I love it. All right, some florals now, I think, we're going to put in there. Oh, look at that. This is beautiful. I'm just gonna cut that head right off short. We don't need a long stem. And I'm gonna try not to get any glue on this bow. There is glue on this pumpkin, so once he is glued in place, he's not going to move like that. But right now, he's a little bit top heavy. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So this is a peony stem, and we are going to use the peony leaves with it as well. So I'm just going to use that bud and the leaf. And we're going to go right in there. So we need to break that up. See, if I put that here, well, here's not bad, but if I put it too close, you don't want the same color pumpkins touching each other. So we need some more floral in there. I'm gonna put another one of these peonies in there. Beauty. I think we'll leave that bud for now. Yes, there we go. We're going to cut that stem. And it's right in there like that. I'm in love with this. I think that we need to continue, I'm standing in your way. I think we need to continue our greenery up a little bit further. So I'm going to just grab another one of those. Jeffrey, if you want to grab it at the office for me, it's on the top shelf in there. How's everybody doing? Hi, hi YouTube land, hi Facebook land. 
Thank you very much for tuning into our channel. Thank you for growing our channel. Uh, even over the summer while we were really busy and didn't really have enough time for YouTube, you were still subscribing and you were still watching. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate that. And if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, please, please do so. So it really helps us out, helps us have the time to be able to do this for all of you guys who are seeming to enjoy it. So thank you again. All right, we're just going to go up a little bit further there with this greenery. So each pea, each spray of ficus gave us four pieces. So I'm just going to use two pieces on each side. There we go. Love. Still wanting to put this big pumpkin in. I think so, huh? Yeah. I think so. It's going in. It's going in. We always believe in a maximum approach here. We are not minimalist by any means. So today, the pumpkin's going in. Yep. I'm just going to give that a moment to rest there and dry a little bit. I have some gorgs. Gorgs? I have a problem with this word. Gorgs. Which are smaller pumpkins, smaller squashes that are used for decorative reasons during the fall. Awesome. Love that. Uh, I know I told you about my pumpkin patch that I have at home. So we go out every evening and, of course, check on them and search for them in the pumpkin patch. And I swear that big white one that I told you about is the size of a beach ball. It's crazy. It must be 60 pounds already. And we still have another month of growing left to do. So it's going to be very interesting. Maybe we'll have to take you along when we harvest it and show you in person. The big white pumpkin. It's going in, y'all. So I can feel that stick with the glue on it on the opposite side there. So I'm just going to hold that in place until it dries for a moment. I can't believe I questioned not putting this in now. It looks fantastic. I love it. Going to get some more florals in there, maybe some ribbon tops in there. I'd like to bring that pink rib pink glitter ribbon up through, I believe. Why are you whispering at me? It's on the top of the rack there. Okay, so he's not going in like that. He's not enjoying his day going in like that. So I'm going to pull off that glue that hasn't set properly. And there is another way. I'm going to show you another way to put them in. Okay, I'm going to use a dowel, a weather, weather, a wire dowel. And I'm just going to go through the foam pumpkin like this all the way through the other side like that so i'm going to make a hole through there see that all right so this dowel is kind of it is wire but it's really really heavy gauge so it'll be really hard to work with to get it tied onto the pumpkin so i'm going to use my regular paper covered wire i'm just going to go right through that hole just like that <coughs> and now we have a tie that i could tie it on instead of gluing because it did not like the other method. So 
It's going to need some pliers to get it really good. I'm going to show you. So here's that wire. So I'm just going to twist that a couple of times with pliers, getting that a really nice attachment. Then I'm going to take that end of that wire and bend it in because the last thing you want is for any sharp wires to be scratching someone's door. Or your own door if you're making this for yourself. Love it. Love it, love it, love it so far. All right, we're going to fill it up now. It really needs some different textures in there. We're going to take another one of these peonies. And we're going to bring that pink up top, just like that. I'm going to take another one of these gorks. Dip it in the glue, and we're going to go right in the side here, just like that. And this is our last one, and this one, I believe, is going to go up on the top as well. Just like that. Love, 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 love it. All right, we do have another flower here. I Again, as like yesterday, I used the same type flower, and I'm going to call this a dahlia. I'm pretty sure this is meant to be a dahlia. So I'm just going to snip, 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 snip. So we have three dahlias. I'm definitely seeing that we need one right here. Try to get into that grapevine, y'all. Not just sitting on the grapevine, you want to get it in through the grapevine. That way it's not going to melt off on you if you do get some heat in the fall. I think we definitely need one over there on the side. Into that grapevine. This is a big, beautiful wreath. Needs to come up there in the middle. Just like that. Now we have some of these. Which I don't know the name of. I've said that in my last video as well. It's a type of Snapdragon maybe or stock. And when this is just going to pull that white through your wreath from the ivory pumpkins. I guess I shouldn't say white. We're pulling that ivory through. That looks great. This is a big, big wreath, a big fatty. I love it. Definitely not the wreath for somebody who has a storm door, so because it would certainly be too fat for that. In my opinion, wreaths are best suited inside your house. They look beautiful on a, in a staircase or as a piece of artwork anywhere throughout your house. But a lot of people like them on their front door. I like them on my front door too. But I tend to worry about them too much if they're outside. They're all like my little babies. So I tend to worry about them when they're outside in the elements. I'm going to put some of this Israeli ruscus that I like so much in here. I'm going to be running out of this real soon. I'm going to have to make another order. Because nothing compares to this greenery in my opinion. This is the best one out there.
I was saying earlier how the different qualities of greeneries define your design. Well, this is definitely a high-end greenery and it does just make that impact so much different than without. It's beautiful. All right, maybe some eucalyptus. I always try to incorporate some eucalyptus into every design. Yes, I think that'll be beautiful. Beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, my God, we have a nice day here. Last month, the weather was terrible here in Newfoundland. So much rain, 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 rain. But ever since September came, we've had three days now. Three days of beautiful, beautiful weather. Look at that. Instant gratification. The... Um, eucalyptus gives instantly as soon as it goes in there it's like oh yeah that was meant to be that was meant to be there I'm trying not to get glue on the pumpkins because it tends to be a little bit harder to get off of the pumpkins when i'm done with you guys on the video part i always go through the wreath i make sure there's nothing sticking at the back to poke in anybody's doors and i always pull up all of the glue strings from the hot glue and I have found that they are a little bit more difficult to get off of those pumpkins so I try to avoid that as much as possible. Okay so one more thing now I think that we should put a little bit more ribbon in here. Yeah I'm going to put just a little tuft up there so now we're just going to make a tail and a loop and that's it so it's almost like a giant lapel ribbon and we're just going to fold that like that okay wait let me get my so we're just going to fold that around our heavy gauge wire just like that and now we just have a tuck a ribbon tuck, we use these a lot in the floral industry. And that can be now, because it's on that rip on that wire, can be inserted anywhere in your wreath. So we're gonna make two of those. It's the tail and a loop. Gonna twist it around there. There's not even really a special way of doing it because it can all be fluffed to whatever shape you want after. Okay. Oh, I might have cut that a little too short. I'm going to have to use my new fancy fancy metal pick machine. And just like that, we have a metal pick. It's a fun machine. I'm still getting used to it, but it works. It gives that extra length and that extra security for all the things that are going into your wreaths. And just like that, I don't think that we're going to do two up there like that. That, that kind of looks like dog ears. So we're not going to do that. I think the other one is going to come out the side here. I'm going to put another metal pick on there. So it made it even longer. And I'm going to go right in behind this pumpkin. Do I? Do I? Do I? I really want to add one bit of this leopard print ferris silk i'm just going to use a loop like this i'm not going to put a loop and i'm just going to put it i don't know maybe this even curls beautifully like that I like it. We're putting it in. I'm just going to put a metal pick on that as well.
dip it in our glue and we're going to go right in there like that. Love those curls actually. Beauty, beauty. I think we need a little something, but maybe it's because I'm not standing back from it. Hi, I'm gonna stand here. I don't know, I think we're almost done. It's a beauty, it sure is a beauty. All right guys, we're gonna wrap it up there for today. I may take a closer look and add a thing or two. If I do, I will post the final product at the end of this video. Again, thanks for joining us here at Peyton's Flowers. Drop by the store if you're local. And if not, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for lots and lots of fun content like this. Thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.